bright-eyed journalism student comes to visit me. She is slightly smarter than the supermodel and wants to crack me, which I am in all places but one. Journalism student says, so what about economics? Are you just contributing to a patriarchal economic structure when you're letting women know, hey, you can just exploit your body in a pinch? Well, don't you think you're glamorizing prostitution? It is glamorous. Look at me. Not all women, unfortunately, have a choice to decide how they want to lose their virginity. Well, to all those women not as fortunate as I am, I say, if he rapes you, make sure you know where his wallet is so you can attempt to pick his pocket while he's picking your cherry. Do you really consider yourself a feminist? <laughs> yeah. Equal pay for equal work, right? I'm splitting my earnings with my pimp 50%. But he doesn't have to fuck anyone. Tell that to the Viagra. Can you honestly say you feel empowered by what you're doing? I'm sleeping in power. Can't you smell me? What about prostitution as slavery? Isn't that essentially what it is? Ha! Okay, babe, clearly you have some huge student loans and are pissed. <laughs> you think working in some dumbass, rat-infested fast food joint is any better? Did your father beat you? No. Your mother? No. No incest at all? None. Can I touch a thing? What? You're the JJ. Can I touch it? Now I see this little femme's angle. I hear it's all sealed up, so it's the big whoop. I just want to stroke it for sex, see what the world's waiting for. I know that one more minute with this slut and my glory days are over. See you later, sis. I'm done playing dorm room, truth or dare. It is after the meeting with the violent femme that the dreams begin. I dream about sex every night. The first night I dream about my high school sweetheart. This dream is just about him kissing me on the neck, very sweet, very innocent, very, he has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> the second night, I dream he is toying with the idea of cunnilingus, kissing my pussy lips over top of thick white panties. The third night, I dream he is fucking my cunt with the handle of a butcher knife and using a bike chain lock as anal beads. <laughs> After that, I dream about having sex with every person I have ever met in my life. I mean everyone. School teacher, doctor, minister, guy at the local convenience store. This massive cerebral attack is not limited to humans, as I dream of sexual encounters with animals as well. The dreams examine every possible sexual act and pretty quickly move into the realm of rape. I am raped by someone every night in my dreams. Sleep. Rape. Head on pillow. Rape. Pajamas on, rape. Close my eyes, rape. Wake up, go through the day, lie in bed of pillows, rape. And the night that I'm gaming by Candy Bambi and Giselle is a sign to me that I must start this auction. I wake up in a cold sweat, pillows sopping. I run quickly to Jamie James's room, kick out the newest slut and scream. Ah! Bang! What's wrong? You going nuts or something? No, I'm going raped. We need to get this auction over with, and I mean ASAP, ASAP. As far as I can tell, only people who haven't violated me are Jesus and motherfucking Mary, and I'm not looking forward to them knocking on the door in my head. Jamie Tang sympathizes. Rape fantasies are okay. Not okay being tortured by a never-ending dreamland of terrors. So, again, the fax machines begin to whistle and whirl when someone makes a phone call to someone in New York City, and that person makes a phone call to the world. She's ready. Candy, Betty, and Zell begin planning their outfits for the auction. I have transformed them from regular whores into ladies in the realm of the untouchables. Each one of them holds a post in a very high level of government. Bambi is on the advisory board for the federal health and sexual welfare of women. Candy is the minister responsible for monitoring the current trends in human trafficking, and Giselle helps the first lady pick out her outfits. <laughs> <laughs> they all wear business suits, but keep their liquid of night jobs taking off their pants. When we arrive at the auction block, the number of people present surprises me. As I had mentioned, my looks were fading. Thirty years old is not the ideal age for cherry picking. But no matter, people were obsessed. Despite rumors of people willing to pay into the millions, the bidding started at one dollar. The auctioneer is a gentleman from the American South. One dollar here, one dollar there, who will give me, who will give me one dollar for the pretty little virgin, make your fantasies come true. One dollar, one dollar for the 
a man in a top hat. Do I hear two dollars? Who's gonna give me two dollars to go cherry pick it? I'm a bid, I'm a bid, one dollar. Who will give me two dollars? Two dollars, two dollars to the lady in the yellow. And good afternoon to you, Mrs. Weinstein. Now let's get this auction going. Better, better, man, hat. Who's gonna play this girl's daddy in the film? Ah, ha, ha. I'm a bid, I'm a bid, two dollars. Who will give me ten dollars? Ten dollars to the octogenarian in the front row. Hope you got a big pension, Grandpa, cause we're gonna move on. Moving on, moving on, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, who will give me fifty dollars, fifty dollars, I'm a I'm a fifty, fifty, fifty to save this girl from the drop and jowls of all the time, please don't tell me, it's ten dollars going once, ten dollars going twice, fifty dollars, thank you, and God bless you, the beautiful movie star couple in the back, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, fifty dollars, who will give me a hundred, is it a hundred thrusts it's gonna take to break this girl, ha man, ha man, ha man, ha man, come on, come on, come on, what do I hear, what do I hear, who Give me a hundred, a hundred dollars to the farmer in the back. Nice job, Farmer Joe. Hope you got a lot of animals on your farm to keep you covered. Cause the spinning's about to skyrocket. Let's move on. Ten thousand, ten thousand. Who will give me ten thousand? Come on, what rich prick wants to give me ten thousand dollars? I don't say. Why, well, thank you, Senator. Now there's a real dog. How much is that doggy in the window? Woo whooping, cock a doo doo doo. I give fifteen thousand, fifteen. French kissing on the USA. Is that the song I hear playing on the radio? Or do I hear 20,000? Who wants to give it? Give it? Give me $20,000 to say slow to all cunts as many times as you want in the evening. Slow. Who? Cut by the heart. 20,000. 20,000! To the Austrian Countess. Royal treatment never hurts when you're about to get naked. <laughs> naked? What, what do you say, folks, to a roll of flour? I'm a bit, I'm a bit. 20,000. Who will give me 50,000? Come on. Come on. We're talking the most famous virgin in the world. This girl don't deserve no college room bullshit. 50,000. 50. I don't say. Thank you, Father. Saving the virgin, I'm sure. Good charity work, Monsignor. This goes on and on, and the bidders become tired. We're up to 24 hours now, but this is a marathon to be won, and it's going to be hard. And during this time, the TV cameras stare, and the one-eyed cripples hand out papers with my photo on the cover in all the great cities of the world. Each day, the bidding reaches a new ridiculous high. The status of buying the most expensive virgin in the world is like a cockfight never seen before. And pretty soon, countries are bidding against one another. Six million, yeah, well, I got the ambassador to buy on the phone with seven million. Yeah, well, don't count your chickens before they hatch, buddy, because I got 7.5 from the Maldives. And pretty soon, <laughs> it looks like my pussy's starting a world war. Burr, it's getting cold war style in here, so the Montreal Olympics or something. There's a tight little gymnast in this bag, and she's perky, and every country wants one. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because clearly the country with the most sweethearts wins the race. There's a lineup of all the world's future kings. China tells the Buddhists, look, we'll free to bed already. Just back down with your bids. Russia wants me real bad, as they want to use my body as a bridge of peace between their crumbling states. The Middle Eastern countries show special interest as they want to keep their celebrity power up as they keep their women down. World leaders make late night calls. Look, you want me to protect your oil interests? Then just back down with your bids. Or, look, look, we'll close our nuclear program, give you the land back, free the hostages, but with all due respect, Mr. World Leader, just let us have that ass. <laughs> the President of the United States tries to buy me as a gift for her husband, as a distraction. She is desperate to keep her power and doesn't want him getting any wily ideas, like taking up office or anything. <laughs> but even all 50 states can't raise enough to purchase me. With economies crumbling around the world, I become a bailout. That's right, lads. Pretty soon you'll be able to buy me on the stock market as clearly my value is going way up. All those fancy European countries, minus the UK, of course, try to put in a bid together. But with so much dissent in that frail organization, they can never reach a number large enough. And then there are the many, many countries on the rise. They know if they've got me, suddenly they've got a bargain chip. Suddenly, Africa's got the cure for AIDS, that kind of thing. That's right, folks. Great countries of the world. Nothing more than voracious TV stations ready to change their policies at the drop of a hat in order to do what's popular. 